809 and 824, 766. 809 once again, 789, 759, and 776. Why in the world do we have so many different credit scores and why do they vary from one to the next? This video will explain everything and even answer the question of is the Credit Karma score really a fake credit score or FACO score like so many people like to call it? We'll find out soon enough here, so let's begin. We first have to start with a myth and fully debunk it, and that myth is that you only have one credit score. However, that is a completely false misconception and the reality is is that you have many credit scores. You heard that right and there are many reasons for that too so let's begin with the first one. One of the biggest reasons why you have so many different credit scores is because there are different credit reporting agencies or CRAs for short also known as bureaus. We've got the nationwide bureaus that most people are familiar with like Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. We also have alternative and supplementary bureaus like Inovis, LexisNexis, and others. We have check and bank screening systems like Chet Systems. There's also employment screening, tenant screening for real estate, and others as well. On top of that, reason number two, there are also different credit scoring models out there. Again, the most familiar one to a lot of people is the FICO score which stands for Fair Isaac Corporation, by the way. There's also the Vantage score, other proprietary scores, and there may be other ones out there using different industries as well. So we've got our credit reporting agencies here at the top, both big and small. So our TransUnions, our Equifaxes, our LexisNexises, and other ones as well. And those are the big agencies that are reporting data out, doing all their data analytics on the back end, etc. And then with that data, they also have their different scoring models. So they might use the FICO model or the Vantage score model and the different variants of each one of those to come up with those three digit scores that we're also familiar with. But wait, there's more. Reason number three is that different credit scoring models also weigh the individual credit factors differently and they may look at different ones or certain ones not at all. So here we've got the FICO score on the left hand side with its five main factors. Those are payment history, amounts owed, or in other words, utilization, uh, length of credit history, also called average length of credit history, new credit, and credit mix. And each one of those has a, basically goes into a weighted average uh, formula here. So it's 35% for payment history, 30%, 15, 10, and 10 for the other ones that follow below. That is to say that payment history and amounts owed are the most important factors making up your FICO credit score overall. Those two factors alone count for 65% of your credit score. Then on the right hand side, we have the Vantage score, which uses six main factors and weights them according to their own proprietary algorithm as well. Uh, they did not disclose the exact percentages, but they did rank them in different orders. So once again, we have payment history at the top, which is extremely important for your overall overall score. Following that, we have age and type of credit, which is a high impact. The percentage of credit limit used, aka utilization again, that's also a high impact to your score. Then your total balances and debt levels have a moderate impact. Your recent behavior and number of inquiries has less of an effect, and your available credit also has less of an impact overall. So naturally, if you have different scoring models, each one giving greater or less importance to certain factors for the overall score, that will of course have to give different outcomes at the end of their equations. Reason number four, different credit scoring models may have different scales or ranges. Again, on the left, we have the FICO scores, and they have two different kind of subdivisions of those scores. The first one is called the base score, which is one that that we all know very well. That one ranges from 300 at the low end up to 850 at the high end. The higher the number, the better the score. But FICO also issues industry specific scores and I'll show you a few of those in a few minutes here. However, those can range from 250 up to 900. Then we've got the Vantage score on the right hand side and there've been different iterations of that over time from the first version to the second, third, and now fourth. The first two iterations ranged from 501 at the low end up to 990 on the high and the more recent two go from 300 to 850, therefore making them much easier to compare to a FICO score. The Vantage score, by the way, is the one that Credit Karma uses. So just because it's different does not mean it's a fake score or anything like that. However, it's a lot less commonly used, at least in the credit card space. So you don't oftentimes see your credit report being pulled via the Vantage score lens, so to speak. It's typically a FICO score, but nonetheless, it's a good gauge of where you happen to be in the overall credit world. In other words, 
numbers, is your credit healthy, okay, or not doing so great? And which areas need work? It can still be a helpful gauge to help determine those types of things. By the way, if you'd like a really handy way to view a lot of your different credit scores in one place on a single dashboard, as well as manage multiple credit cards, their rewards, and their benefits all together, definitely check out today's sponsor called Matt's Rewards. Matt's Rewards is an app that allows you to manage your credit cards, rewards, and benefits all in one place. This includes seeing when your bills are due, tracking your sign-up bonuses, monitoring your credit scores, and more. And perhaps my favorite feature is the Benefits and Offers dashboard, which you can unlock with the gold level of Matt's Rewards. You might be familiar with Chase Offers, Amex Offers, Bank of Merrill Deals, and others. These are like digital coupons that provide you with additional savings and discounts on top of the regular rewards you earn. Each time you sync the app, all of your offers will be activated automatically, including the hidden ones from Amex that you didn't even know about. So if you'd like to try Matt's Rewards, use the link down below in the description to get the gold level entirely free for your first month. Now let's take a look at reason number five. There are different credit scores for different industries. That is, you'll see different scores being used for credit card lending versus auto lending versus mortgage lending. So based on the type of financial product for which you're applying, that can make a big difference in terms of which report and therefore which score gets used in that decision-making process. So if you were to pull up, for example, your experience score and you see a 760 sits and you're applying for a car or a house and that experience score is like a 726, that can actually still be okay. And as you're about to see here, it gets actually pretty complicated, especially with FICO scores. Here's the thing. The FICO score models can vary by industry and within industries. And adding an additional layer of complexity, the data may be sourced by different bureaus. Let's start with the FICO scores used in the credit decision-making process there on the left-hand side of your screen. We can see the FICO bank card score 9, 8, 5, 4, 3, and 2. And they are sourced, again, by different uh, uh, CRAs or bureaus. So the first two there at the top, uh, bank card score 9 and 8, are sourced from all three major bureaus. Then if the lender wants to use FICO bank card score 5, that one's via Equifax. FICO bank card score number 4 comes via TransUnion, and then both 3 and 2 there at the bottom are via Experian. Then if you're going into the car buying process, we also have FICO scores specific for the auto industry. Uh, the top two, FICO auto scores 9 and 8, again come from all three major bureaus. FICO auto score 5 comes via TransUnion. FICO auto score 4 comes via Equifax and FICO Auto Score 2 comes via Experian. Are you still with me out there? And finally, if you go into the house buying process, FICO also makes industry-specific scores for mortgages. You've got the FICO Score 5 via Equifax, the FICO Score 4 via TransUnion, and the FICO Score 2 via Experian. Also outlined there in the bottom in yellow, we have some newer releases. That is the Bank Card Score 10, Auto Score 10, and then the FICO Score 10 and 10T models. And if you add all those up, it amounts to something like 8 different models just from FICO alone. So it's pretty crazy, I know. Um, and they did not all come up with these at the same time. This was done over many, many years as models were improved and revised over time to ideally give lenders more and more clarity to certain areas of you know, risk underwriting and stuff like that to help uh, banks and other lenders make more informed decisions uh, about whether they're going to extend credit or other uh, basically debt vehicles to help finance things. And a likely reason why we have so many different types of industry specific scores and models within each of those different different industries is because if you're applying for a credit card for a $5,000 limit, for example, versus a car that costs 15 or 20K versus a house that's three or 400,000 or more, those types of different risk levels uh, and underwriting criteria are very different. Whew. All right, let's move into reasons seven and eight, and we'll take these two together. Another reason why you have so many crazy different credit scores is that lenders, for example, banks, may pull from different bureaus in different regions. As an example of this, Bank A might pull Experian in the West Coast and TransUnion in the East Coast, while Bank B might pull TransUnion in all regions, and Bank C might pull two bureaus that vary. It could be a pairing of Experian TransUnion, or maybe TransUnion and Equifax, or something like that. And then there's Capital One that likes to pull all three bureaus every time you apply for a credit card. Furthermore, reason number eight is that lenders may choose to use different FICO score models. Again, we've got two different things at hand here. First of all, a bank might wanna pull your Experian credit report, 
but then based on that report, they might wanna see the FICO 8 score or the FICO 9 score. While another bank in a different area might still wanna see your FICO 8 or FICO 9 score, but maybe they wanna source their data from a different bureau. So if you were to go apply for a credit card from Chase, American Express, Barclays, Citibank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Discover, all on the same day, all those different banks might actually see a different credit score and maybe using different reports. And no, that was not a recommendation to go apply for like seven credit cards in one day. Reason number nine, some lenders may only report to one or two CRAs or bureaus. This can cause certain accounts to appear on one report and not on another, resulting in differences among your scores. In fact, if we go way back in time to when the Apple Card was first released, that Apple Card only reported to one bureau at that time, just TransUnion. Nowadays, it does report to all three bureaus, so there's no issue anymore, but it's just interesting to see how that developed over time. So if you happen to get a credit card from a smaller credit union or perhaps a local regional bank uh, or a personal loan, again, from not a very well-known national institution, institution, there's a chance that it may only report to one bureau. And if an account only shows up on your Equifax report, it won't have any effect on your TransUnion report because it wasn't reported there. Therefore, that will also cause some variances in your credit scores. And our 10th and final reason, credit reports may get updated at different times. To illustrate this, here are six of my credit scores, and these are the same ones that you saw in the intro to this video with a little more context added. Starting on the left, we have my Credit Karma scores of 809 and 824. Credit Karma uses the Vantage Score 3.0 model to generate both of the TransUnion and Equifax scores, and it was last updated on November 4th, 2022. My Experian score of 766 used the FICO 8 scoring model with data provided by, of course, Experian, and it was last updated on November 1st. Checking my score via Amex, which was 809, I noticed that it used the Vantage Score 3.0 model with data provided by TransUnion, and it also updated on November 4th, 2022. So it makes sense why this score was identical to the one provided by Credit Karma, because they were both updated at the same time, and also used the Vantage Score 3.0 model, and also had their data from TransUnion. Moving on to my credit score from Chase, it also used the Vantage Score 3.0 model. However, unlike Amex and Credit Karma, Chase pulls their data from Experian. It was last updated on November 1st. With Wells Fargo, my score there was a 759, and they used the FICO 9 scoring model with data pulled from Experian. It was last updated on October 22nd. And last over there on the far right, my score from Discover was a 776. They used the FICO 8 scoring model and pulled their data from TransUnion. This score was last updated on October 10th. So whether it's different credit reporting agencies, different scoring models, or different lenders choosing which report and which model they want to use to give you that credit card, house, or car, hopefully now it makes a lot more sense why you might have dozens of different credit scores. One is not necessarily better or worse or right or wrong compared to another. Rather, they just represent different ways of observing and rating your overall credit situation. And with all that said, if you enjoyed today's video and believe it could benefit other people, then please help me get it in front of them by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on those notifications. Also, check out the links down below in the description area to earn some more cash back when you shop online through Rakuten. To sign up for Matt's Rewards, which is a great app to manage multiple credit cards, rewards, and benefits all in one place. And to view my site with a bunch of great credit card offers that I've organized into different categories to help you find the cards that you like best. I thank you all for watching today's video. I hope it brought you some great value. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And while you're waiting on my next upload, always remember that you are great.